Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be discussing bread tins. Please subscribe and please share. I've been selling these on eBay and on my Facebook page and a couple of you guys out there said to me Steve got your tin mate but how do we look after it? Because obviously it's not like a general rubbishy old thing you buy off the net and they make them in millions down in foreign lands. But this is actually an English made solid steel tin, handmade. Around about 70 years ago this was, brand new. So this and the tins you've arrived, which arrived to you are ancient, basically speaking to us. I wasn't even around when this was made. It's quite interesting, the fact is that this is actually she's selling in an antique shop for 25 quid. Yeah, yeah, I know. I should be charging you 25 quid for these, really. But they're a baking tin, a commercial baking tin for bread. Or like I've been using it, I've been using it for cake as well. It's been ideal. But along the way, Basically speaking, we need to be looking after the tin because obviously this isn't your everyday tin and somewhere along the line, people seem to think they can just chuck it into a dishwasher and it'll wash itself. This isn't like that. This isn't those type of tins. This is old stuff. Back when this was made, there wasn't a dishwasher. So basically speaking, the important thing is to look after the tin. Now we're gonna run through this next video and this will show you what I've done to the tin before you even get the tin. I will get on with the video. First guys, you want to boil up some water. Or if you've got really hot water from a tap, fill up a, an old bucket. You don't want a brand new bucket, an old bucket. Some that you don't mind throwing away. Then what we do is we get out of our tin. And I mean, from looking at the tin to start with, you'd think, oh my God, you know. But it's not that bad inside, it's the outside that's probably worse. But when you actually get round to it, you'll realise that it's not that bad. So all we're going to do is chuck the earth tin into a bucket of hot water with some washing up liquid, and we're just going to leave it there for around about half an hour. You can leave it for an hour if you want. So from that, the next stage, guys, basically speaking, get your little scrubbing brush out. Now, if that tin has got a bit of corrosion in it, don't worry about it, just wash the corrosion off. It'll come off with water. It's just surface rust. So that'll just come off and just clean off everything. Just make sure that the tin inside is well clean. Now the outside one, I'm afraid guys, you can only do that when you're baking it off in the oven. Every time it comes out the oven, give it a little scrape, scrape some of the black off you know, eventually you'll get down to the metalwork. The only difference is your loaf will, or cake will actually bake faster. Once we've done that and we've got it out the bucket, what you need to do then guys, is just rinse it off in a tap, under the tap. So you're getting rid of the, what I call the washing up salts. And now, basically speaking, what we're gonna do is, you wanna put your oven on, you want to run about 200 Celsius, put your tin straight into the oven and leave it there for a good half an hour. Now, once it's really heated up, what you want to do then guys is take it out of the oven. And at this stage, we're going to be using a product called Prep. This is a releasing spray, which I'm selling on eBay and on my Facebook page. It's around about 10 to 12 pound a tin plus delivery, or it may be included. I don't know what it is at the moment. And what we're gonna do is give it a good spray down on all the sides and all the corners. And this is what's great about this product. I mean, in the old days, we do it with something else. Then what we're gonna do, is chuck it straight back into the oven. I'm going to leave it there for a like, around about half an hour to an hour. Or you can just forget about it. And this is basically what we call seasoning the steel. So even if you add any rust or anything in it, 
you've now seasoned it. And you can see by the smoke coming off the tin, it's really, really hot. And then we just chuck it on the side amongst the tins. And as you can see from the tins I've got already done, they're my baking tins. They look exactly the same as the tin you get. Now all I basically do then is pack it into a plastic bag and wrap it into, wrap it up in some off cuts and wrap it up, pack it up ready for you guys. Now the important part of this guys is when you get your tin, I know I've already previously washed the inside of the tins. Now, the outside is going to be very sticky. So, the outside is your responsibility more so than the inside. The inside's been already pre-washed. Pre but, the reason that I say to wash the inside again if you like, is basically speaking, if it's been lying around or it's been transported, the oil, though this doesn't have a taste, it doesn't, if you actually leave it somewhere and it's been lying around a while, it, the tin can actually pick up a taste. So basically speaking, you don't want to have that taste in your mouth when you're eating your loaf of bread. So the best thing is just to rewash it and pop it back in the oven, spray it back up, pop it back in the oven again and you're ready. So it's, it's perfectly okay. But the outside, you can just scrape it off as you want. Now, Basically speaking, after you've finished with the tin, you've baked your loaf, don't do anything with it. Now, just let it cool down, put it in a bag or cover it. Now in the bakery, all I do is leave it on the side and I'll just go back to it the following day. And before we put anything in it, we just check that somebody hasn't turned up and landed in there because though, we always have to, in the bakery industry, check our tins just in case. Because though they're dry, if they were wet and you oil them the day before, and just supposing in your house a moth turned up, or a bee turned up and landed in it, they'd stick. They'd stick to the oil you've got left in it. So always leave it dry. And that's it, you don't have to do anything else. The reason you keep it covered is just to keep any tastes of anything getting into it. But if you're a regular baker and you bake all the time, you'll probably be using it all the time anyway, so you wouldn't have to worry about it. But don't put it away oiled up. Okay, because even if you use this or any other product, you'll end up the oil a taste and it'll get onto the loaf. And don't worry too much about the inside, though they look a bit odd inside, that is years of use. I bake with this tin every day of the week. So it's nothing unusual. They do look a bit weird inside. Okay, you look at oh, oh, I wouldn't want to eat that. But actually you're not eating the tin. You're baking in the tin. It's, that's what it's all about. Now in the old days, before non-stick and all that rubbish, this is what they had. There was no such thing. And the only way that they actually seasoned their steel was by baking them and putting oil on them. And that's all they used to do. Back in them days, they'd have probably used pig fat. They had a white pig fat round in it, popped in the oven, woof. And that's what this coating is on there, basically. There's a coating all the way around this tin. It's not no special thing, but if you pop it in a dishwasher, it will come off. So I hope that's got you up to speed with the tin. And any tins you buy, I mean, even the cheap ones from the supermarket or wherever you buy them from, though they come with that coating on, within seconds, the coating's hanging off of it. I mean, I picked up a tin the other day from Sainsbury's, took it home, done a few roasters in it, the coating was already off of it. But, of course, my technique with seasoning your tins comes in handy. The only difference is with those type of tins, they're not like this, solid as a rock. They're that cheap, thin stuff that's so thin, you can push it and bend it. These, you're not pushing and bending these. These are solid. So, look after them. You've got them at a hell of a cheap price. If you don't want them, just send them back. I'm quite happy, I'll take them back. You can have your money back. It's not a problem with that. But guys, you can also use these 
as an antique if you want. Basically speaking, don't do anything with it. At this stage, if you want to use an antique, pop it in your dishwasher, but you don't want any rust on it. When it comes out, you might want to put it back in again. Once it's come out, then spray it with lacquer. And you've got an antique. And you could sell it to the antique shop for like 10, 15 quid. Because they'll buy these things now. They want them looking like this. If you clean them off, and I've seen them on eBay. Oh, antique tins. Oh yeah, they're okay, they're antiques, but you've killed them. Because basically speaking, you've took them back to brand new. And the whole point of an old baker's tin is to look like an old baker's tin. You're not gonna create 70 years of baking like that if you clean it all off. So just remember that guys, this is history. Your granddads were probably, if they were bakers, they'd probably be using the same tin. In fact, I just look at this tin and I'm, I just think to myself, how many people have been through this tin? Well, not literally through the tin, but you know what I mean. It's how many bakers have holded this tin throughout the years. I mean, I've had this particular tin since 1988. So, and the baker before me, how long has he had the tin? I mean, it goes back a long way. And even some of the tins I got could be over a hundred year old. Because looking at them, I'm seriously wondering if they are a hundred year old because the way they've been made. You know, but anyway, please subscribe and please share. And we'll see you again in the next video. Laters.